All right. So, Matt, I've noticed that it always seems like I only get sick Monday through Friday. Like I feel bad Monday through Friday and it never happens on the weekend. It's only during the week. And I think I must have a weekend immune system. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. (laughs) Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the graveyard. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Adam. And my name's Matt. Now, pull up a tombstone or settle into your casket and get comfortable because this is Graveyard Tales. All right, everybody, here we are again. Matt, how you doing tonight, brother? Man, I am good. I am snowed in. Yep. I was going to (laughs) say, I am cold, and it's not only because it's cold here. I'm cold from looking at what y'all have going on. Oh, man, it is unbelievable. I mean, growing up in Tennessee, I've, I've never seen this much snow. Yeah. Normally we get ice. Yep. And then some snow. So you get maybe, you know, if if we got four inches of snow, man, this place is shut down. Yep. We I guarantee you out in my yard I could take a ruler and and measure a foot of snow. And I mean not in like a bank. Mm-hmm. I mean uh, the steps coming out to the graveyard when I stepped in on my entire boot sunk in the <laughs> yep. snow and it's up above my ankle i like this is insane yeah that's <laughs> that's the most i've ever known it to snow up there because i i lived there for 15 years and we got i can't remember what year it was you and i talked about it a little while ago but um several years back when it shut down nashville for a day or two because yeah. of the snow it was maybe five inches i'd say max in my backyard there but yeah it's mom grandma you everybody snowed in mom's been sending me videos of it just snowing all day long big snowflakes too it's not little in fact when i came out here it was still snowing yeah you may be it's been it's been all day you may have to dig yourself out to get out i know i had to dig myself in i couldn't (laughs) get the door open (laughs) yeah that's a concern uh we'll try to finish up quick so you we don't have multiple hours of snow (laughs) packed in on top uh we were coming back from tennessee we went up there for new year's and we were coming back we drove through arkansas it ended up snowing on us then it started sleeting and freezing rain and like that the interstate was just shutting down every bridge was a sheet of ice and I mean, people would come to a crawl going over those bridges. Finally, when we got out of it, I pulled over to get gas and I had to chip a half inch of ice off the sensor on the front of the car so my cruise would work. But it was like a half inch of ice on there. Golly. Like, how in the world? It was 28 degrees and sleeting and it just it covered the car. That just froze up on you. Yep. That poor forerunner was a sheet of ice at that gas station. <laughs> And and we didn't get we had a we had a very uh, quiet New Year's here and and Herr Adams in town, and we had we had kind of talked about getting together and then uh, the the Tuesday before New Year's, Piper my youngest winds up with COVID. Yep. So you know we had to we had to isolate her, and uh, so we couldn't we couldn't drag uh, Ashley and. Adam and Michael all up here and get them sick. So yep. we he he comes in town. We didn't get to we didn't get to hang out at all. But I know. you know, it, it was just it was just kind of an odd thing. I was like, the doctor comes in and says, Well, she's got COVID. I was like, You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um so real quick, we'll say go check out the Podbelly Network at podbelly.com. Go search their website and you can find some different shows to listen to and different tricks and tips on recording a podcast and whatnot. We also want to thank tonight's sponsors, Best Fiends, HelloFresh, and EveryPlate. 
And I wanted to real quick before we get into it, thank everybody um, for the reviews and the comments mm-hmm. that you have left. We've got a lot of them here lately. Um, it it's helped. We got a, a few negative reviews, and um, the graveyard came to the rescue. And you know, you get a few negatives, and it kind of drops you down in the charts. And um, the more positive you get, the higher up in the chart. So I wanted to thank everybody who has recently left a review to boost us up in the charts and negate yeah. those two people who didn't like what we do. Yeah. So. And, and remember, you know, it, it, it does, it does kind of warm our hearts when we see positive uh, comments and reviews, but that's really not why we ask it. The whole point is so, that when people go and search for podcasts about paranormal, about ghosts and haunted places and cryptids, that Graveyard Tales comes up on the list. Mm-hmm. Okay, that that's the whole thing. Um, and and as you know, independent podcasters, we rely on that. Yeah, that's all we, we got. We yeah, we rely on people seeing our show and giving us a chance. And so. Thank you guys for doing that because that keeps us up there where other people can find us. Oh yeah. Um, and that, that's really, that's really why we ask it. It's, it's not because we're, we're stuck on ourselves. Right. <laughs> I, I have an ego. I'll admit that, but it's not that high to need to read good things about myself all the time. So thank you for helping bump us up in the charts and getting more people into the graveyard. Um, if you don't have a new year's resolution still, I mean, you're a little late to get a New Year's resolution, but I've got one for you. You can make a New Year's resolution to bring at least five people this year to the graveyard. Yeah. Just at least get five people listening. You've got till December. Uh, let's say you got just till the end of the year, whenever that is. I was going to give a, yeah. an exact date, but just whenever the end of the year is. Bring five people by then. That'll be a great New Year's resolution. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing. I've already got two yep. this year. So, <laughs> All right. So let's take a second and talk about one of our longtime sponsors, Best Fiends. Now, if you've listened to our show at all or, or been in the Facebook group, you know that Matt and I are big fans of best fiends and i know that a lot of you are because man i don't know if you've seen this recently but in the group i had a few people uh, post in there and go you know i really appreciate you guys getting me addicted to best fiends you know or <laughs> great now i'm obsessed with it too thanks guys <laughs> so yeah i mean it, it happens you start playing and the next thing you know boom 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 you're you're blowing through levels and you're like Hey, all right, all right. Oh, just one more. Oh, oh, yep. Okay, just one more. And see, that's you know? the that's the cool part about it is because you can get lost in this. When you're on a winning streak, you can get lost yeah. in that. And yeah. I like to do it sometimes between segments that we're recording. Like if, if we're recording something and we got to dump audio real quick during that process, You'll see Matt and I both on our phones. If we recorded it, we'd be on our phones doing the whole uh, Mm -hmm. Best Fiends thing while we're waiting. And I know you guys do the same thing. It's great. And the other cool thing, too, that we haven't mentioned in a while is you've got member numbers. And you Mm -hmm. can actually share those numbers with people and become friends on Best Fiends. And then compare your stats with each other and see where you are and i've seen that go around in the facebook group too people say here's my best fiends number friend me on there Mm -hmm. and they do and it's a really cool community yeah and it and it lets you kind of uh share and compete with with your friends no matter where they are yep you know we've said this before you know amanda and ashley blow us away oh yeah i'm i'm on like level 263 um and I just, I, you know, I'll go and I'll hit a run where I can get through four or five, and then I get stuck. And it may take me a few days before I can actually get past it. Yep. And, you know, so it, it never really gets old. They're always adding new levels. Um, 
I, I really dig that aspect of the game, and, and one of my favorite parts is when they have the special events. Yeah, you know, around around holidays, um, you know, around different seasons, they they have new. Uh, I I guess you know they're almost like side quests. Mm-hmm. You know, you you get. You can keep playing the game as you have been, but oh well, you can you can earn some some bonuses if you stop and you do this, um, and so it it it's almost like taking another route through this game um, with a few little twists that are fun and unique to that portion, and you know you can really it's almost like having two games in one. Right, right. So Graveyard Tales listeners can go and download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. That's right. Download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or on Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Uh, but Matt, that's all I've got. So why don't you tell us, brother, what are we talking about tonight? Okay. So tonight we're taking a look at one of the coolest castles I have ever seen. If you're uh, watching the video, you will see that Amanda got me a green screen for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so my backdrop tonight is our topic, which is pajama castle. Or pre, Predyama. Yeah, Predyama. I, knew I was going to say it. Predyama, Predyama, either way. Yeah, I, uh, I was going to say it. Ways. I looked it up and I did what everybody in the group told me to do. Go Google search a pronunciation. And yeah. the the two that were most common was Predyama or Predyama. Yeah. So um, we'll probably, because of our southern tongues, call it Predyama. Yeah. Um, and also because. Or, or pajama. Yeah, I was going to say. I, I may have already done. Um, I, I kept thinking this whole time, uh, pajama. I'm going to research pajama <laughs> in my pajamas. So, But uh, Pajama Castle is located in south central Slovenia, which is a uh, it, it's a, it's a historical area. Um, there, there was a, a lot that happened over several hundred years in this area that gave it some really interesting history, some cool legends and stories, and of course, some paranormal activity. Well, of course. So, um, we're, we're going to, the history of this place, um, it is pretty unique because of the way this castle is built. Mm-hmm. Um, I I have not seen a castle quite like this, and so Adam's going to get into that because we always say the history, you know, speaks to the hauntings. In this case, the the architecture uh, and, and how this place was built really plays into why it it may or may not be haunted. Right. Right. So as we always say, go check our sources. You can go down to the bottom of the show notes and find where we found all this information and continue the research because there is so much history that I'm not going to be able to get into all of it tonight. Yeah. Otherwise, we would just do two episodes of history and one episode of the weird occurrences there. So I'm going to hit some of the highlights of the history. But if you go into our sources, you can find all the rest of the history and just go along with the other couple hundred years that I'd skipped or, you know, thousand years that I skipped or whatever you want to say. Um, now, like, uh, like Matt said, um, it's either Predyama or Prajama. Um, so I will probably say Prajama. Um, but Prajama castle is a Renaissance castle that's built within a cave mouth in South central Slovenia. Now, in the historical region, uh, it's in the historical region of Carniola. I probably pronounced that wrong, but um, it is located in the village of Prejama, approximately 11 kilometers from the town of Postonia and nine kilometers from Postonia Cave. Now, 
I, I wanted to put in a little bit about Postonia Cave because yeah. um, of how famous it is. Um, a lot of people know it. Um, you may not know that you know it, but if you go look up pictures, you're going to go, oh, yeah, I, I have heard of that cave. So go look up the pictures while we're talking about it. But they're similar in how they were formed and their appearance and what's inside these caves. So I guess uh, most of the caves around the Postonia Prajama area are about the same. So let's look at uh, Postonia Cave real quick. Now, this says Postonia Cave is the only karst cave with a railway. Now, the cave that uh, Prajama Castle in is a karst cave as well, which we'll talk about. Um, but this railway was built more than 140 years ago. The unique tourist train will take you to the underground network of karst corridors, galleries, and halls. And during an hour and a half long guided tour, you will learn about all of the most important karst features. The largest 16 meter high stalagmite known as the skyscraper. The crystal white symbol of Postonia Cave the brilliant, the oldest underground post office in the world, and the most famous underground animal, the Ulm, or the human mm -hmm. fish. Yeah. Um, now, the karst, um, what a karst is, is a, karst is a type of landscape where the dissolving of the bedrock has created sinkholes, sinking streams, caves, springs, and other characteristic features. Karst is associated with soluble rock types such as limestone, marble, and gypsum. And uh, so not only Postonia Cave, but the cave that Prajama is in is a karst style cave where you've got, I mean, it's filled with limestone. You've got water running through it uh, that washes away some of this to create the cave system. And then as the cave is formed, water's still dripping from the ceiling, so it's causing these stalagmites and stalactites and all the features in the cave. And keep this in mind because we're going to talk more about this and the makeup of the cave toward the end of this episode. Now, I mentioned the Ulm, and the Ulm is a blind cave-dwelling salamander also called the Proteus and the Human Fish. It's called this for its pale pinkish skin. Um, now, it spent so long adapting to life in caves that it's mostly blind, hunting mm -hmm. instead with various super senses, this says, including the ability to sense electricity, which is kind of cool. It's kind of like a shark. They can pick up electrical signals. Now, it says it never grows up. It retains the red feathery gills of its larval form, even when it becomes sexually mature um, at, and this says at sweet 16. Um, dumb little joke they put in. But <laughs> it says it stays this way for the rest of its remarkably long life because these things can live past 100 years old. Holy cow. Yeah, so you got a little like um salamander thing that can mm -hmm. be over a hundred years old and it's blind lives in this cave says yeah. the and those those feathery like gills you see in other animals too like the uh the oxalotl yep um yep. you know it has those red feathery gills um there is a a rope type fish it's not an eel it's an actual fish um called uh, a siren they also have that that hmm. feathery feathery gill thing, um, but they're very unique animals. Um, you know, the oxalotl is essentially like a salamander that com lives completely underwater. Yep, he it's not amphibious, um, and it breathes through those gills. Mm -hmm. But you know, and it very unique animals. It's interesting that one would be native to this particular location. Yeah, yep. And those red feathery gills help it pull in oxygen more uh -huh. where, you know, the, these streams in a cave might be kind of oxygen poor. Um, and so to live there, it has to have something to help kind of um, suck in more oxygen. But this says that the Ulm was once described as a baby dragon on the account of its small snake like body. So people used to say when they would see them 
in ancient history here that it was a baby dragon. Mm-hmm. And, oh, dragons must be in this cave. See, we see the babies. So kind of has a weird little folklore there with it, but it says it's fully aquatic, swimming with a serpentine wriggle while foraging for insects, snails, and crabs. Um, now let's get back to uh, Prajama Castle here. This says the first mention of Prajama Castle was in 1274 with the German name Lug, when the patriarch of Aquile built the castle in a Gothic style. It was later acquired and expanded by the Lug noble family, also known as the Knights of Adelsberg, which is the German name for Postonia. Now, the castle was built here due to the protection that the cave supplied. And in fact, nestled into the rocks, it would have been quite difficult to access the castle, which made it the perfect hideaway. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at pictures or you're looking at the picture behind Matt, the legitimately this cave has a castle coming out of the cave. It's like the, it almost looks like it was built from the surrounding stone, but it's not, it was just built into this cave opening. And like they said, that, is great defense when you've got an attacking army or something like that. So it, it, it was very intelligent to do that. Yeah. I mean, they're only coming from me in one direction, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it, it's not, it, it's not like castle cave. They are, it's literally inside the cave portion of it is so much so that they consider part of the cave as part of the castle. Yep. Because it just kind of flows from yep. one to the other. It's a cave soul. A cave soul. <laughs> <laughs> now, this says that perhaps the most popular and infamous occupant of the castle was Erasmus of Lug. He was a knight and lord of the castle in the 15th century and son of the imperial governor of... Uh, Triste, um, Nicolaj Luger. Now, he was a well-known robber baron, this says, who ran afoul of the powerful Habsburg rulers. According to the legend, Erasmus came into conflict with the Habsburgs when he killed the commander of the Imperial Army, Marshal Pappenheim, who had offended the honor of Erasmus's deceased friend, Andre Baumkircher of yeah. Vipava. Yep. Um, now, it says, fleeing the vengeance of the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick III, Erasmus reached the family fortress of Prajama. Uh, from there, he allied himself with King Matthias Corvinus and began to attack Habsburg estates and towns in Carniola. Now, while he was in the castle, he used a hidden passageway created from a natural vertical shaft to ensure that supplies could get in and out of the castle. The secret passage exits to the top of the cliff and also allowed Erasmus to continue his robberies. So there's within the the cave, they have a secret tunnel that goes up onto the top of the cave so people could lower in food, keep him supplied during a siege or something like that. And he could also sneak out and, and do some things um, without being caught getting out of his castle. Right. So I found this brief excerpt on Erasmus that I thought was interesting and wanted to kind of put in here. Um, it says that Robin Hood is well known all over the world. But Slovenia had its own version. According to the legend, the knight Erasmus of Lug lived in the 15th century of the Prejomsky uh, Prejomsky grad in the castle of Lug. He robbed caravans, but didn't keep the goods for himself. He gave it to the people. Later on, he even killed a member of the royal family of Austria. For that, he was to be executed. But the siege of the castle was ineffective. He was well supplied uh, with the secret tunnels and so well supplied that he would catapult fresh cherries and meat to the bewildered attackers. Yeah. 
I even saw where they said he he catapulted a, a roasted pig at him. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's- can you can you imagine you're out there and you're like, okay, we're 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 gonna hold this siege. They're gonna run out of food and fresh water, <laughs> yep. and then they like throw in food at you. Yep. <laughs> like y'all look famished. Have a Where have a the pig. Hell? Where the hell is he getting this food? Yeah, right. That's that's basically what they were saying. Does he have a garden and a farm in the cave? I mean, <laughs> he's growing those cave hogs back there. Yep. Secret passageway. <laughs> so this says that eventually the emperor commissioned the governor of Triste, Andres Ravbar, with the capture of or killing of Erasmus. And Erasmus was killed after this long siege that we mentioned. Now, according to a popular but unfounded legend, Erasmus was betrayed by one of his men and was killed by a shot from a cannon in his lavatory. Yeah. (laughs) So the the dude's like, hey, when he's pooping, I'm going to fly. I'm going to wave this flag. Yep. And here his 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 toilet is right here. So just hit him while he's pooping. Yeah. So and and the story I was watching like a essentially a video tour of the castle and sure enough now understand the the castle has been through some renovation so there's a chance that it wasn't like this when Erasmus was the resident of the castle but yeah. now the uh the water closet is right there on the front side of the castle where it would be accessed by, you know, a cannon fire right there on the, on the outer edge. Mm-hmm. And, and you look in and there it is, you know, whole little thing. And um, it makes you wonder, did they, did they do it this way when they were doing a renovation to really push the story? Cause it's a good story. Oh I mean, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. You know, they were like, tell us when, you know, tell us when he's going to the John and we can hit the John with a cannonball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, that's a one in a million shot, man. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're going to shoot and kill one guy with a cannon. <laughs> oh, I know. I cannon know. Sniper. <laughs> so this goes on to say that after the siege and destruction of the original structure, the castle fell into ruins. Now, the second castle, reconstructed by the Pergstall family in the first decade of the 16th century, was destroyed in an earthquake. What we see today, it was created in 1570 by the new owner, Baron Philip von Gobenzel, who uh, leased the castle by Archduke Charles of Austria. So, like we were, um, like Matt was just saying, did they rebuild it just like it was? Mm Mm-hmm. Because this technically the third iteration of this castle, right? Because it, it somebody destroyed it, then an earthquake destroyed the other one, and that would suck. You think, okay, I just rebuilt this castle, and I'm in a cave on a mountain. They can't get me, and then an earthquake takes you out. Oh, I know. And like right after, yeah, yeah, it right was after long. the they, it was essentially the same years, like 1511. Um, when the earthquake happened and, and they had just completed, you know, that, that renovation. Yeah. Yep. So this says the magnificent Renaissance style castle sits against the caves and under the original, original medieval fortifications. Now in 1810, the castle was inherited by count Michael Coron- Coronini von Kronberg. And in 1846, it was sold to the, Windischgratz family who remained its owners until the end of World War II. Now, when it was nationalized by the Yugoslav communist authorities and then turned into a museum. Now, it says it's uh, been used as the backdrop in numerous movies, television programs, and music videos. And it's also mesmerized George R. R. Martin, Arthur, the best-selling uh, the best seller of the Game of Thrones. Moreover, the castle has hosted the Discovery Channel team who found the castle to be inhabited by some ghosts. 
So we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, one of the uh, um, films that was done there, uh, I found this on uh, Slovenia Info. It says, in 1986, the action film and martial arts master, legendary actor Jackie Chan, filmed The Armor of God at Prajama Castle near Postonia. The film is full of exciting scenes, the most famous being that in which Chan jumps onto a balcony from a cliff. The actor injured himself badly as he climbed on the rock face under the castle, but he soon returned to the set of his uh, after his operation and finished filming. One could say that Prajama Castle has two legendary heroes, the knight uh, Erasm of Prajama and the actor Jackie Chan. So that that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. It is cool. Uh, and I, I'm going to have to go watch that movie because I feel like I've seen it, but um, don't remember it. So, Okay, Adam, let's take a minute and talk about one of our long-term sponsors, HelloFresh. And you guys have heard Adam and I talk about HelloFresh many times in the show, how much we enjoy it. But if you're unsure about what HelloFresh is, it's a meal delivery service where you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. You get to skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's what makes HelloFresh America's number one meal kit. Now, the new year is a great time to start thinking about what's what's important. What what do you want to what do you want to do for the next year? Um, it might be saving money. I know that's always on my list. Oh yeah. Um, and and a good way to do that is eat out less. Um, or maybe you want to learn to cook. Or maybe you want to focus on your your diet. You know, you want to eat better, more healthy. I'm always Hello, trying to do that. Yeah, and we're 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 back doing it right now. Um, Hello Fresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. Yeah, and I I know we've talked about this before, but I. I can't get over how much Michael enjoys doing these with us. It's almost like a project for him or like a science experiment because, yeah. you know, you take it for granted when you get older. But as a kid, when you're able to mix these ingredients together and then watch something come together as a meal, cook and it becomes something, you know, you cut the chicken up and it goes from one color to another color when it's done cooking and they learn that and they, they get into cooking these good meals. They really enjoy it more than if you just slap some chicken nuggets down in front of them. But, yeah. you know, it, it, you may not be able to do that if you don't get HelloFresh because it can be expensive sometimes to, to do that. But HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you can save on average over $65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. So that's more money to put toward some of those other 2022 goals that Matt and I were talking about. You know, you can put that towards your gym membership if you are like Ashley and I and, and want to be healthier. So save that money, put it toward a gym membership or something. Or hell, put it toward going out and drinking at the end of the week because it's been a long <laughs> week. But HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including veggie, calorie smart, family friendly, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Recipes like hibachi sweet soy bavette steak and shrimp, they bring restaurant quality meals right to your kitchen, while their white cheddar wonder burgers make it easier than ever to skip the takeout. Oh, that sounds so good. I know, dude. <laughs> I know. I'm, my mouth is watering and my stomach, I'm starving. Uh, HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your order online or in the app. Easily change your delivery day, food preferences, and plan size, or skip a week whenever you need to. If you're going on vacation, you don't want HelloFresh sitting on your front porch. So you can just go in there and say, hey, skip this week, send it to me next time. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. Speaking of my stomach growling, Ashley's down there making some tostadas from the 
Hello Fresh meals, and I'm dying. We've got to get done so I can go eat them. But if you want to get in on this and and order you some Hello Fresh, all you got to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash Graveyard16 and use our code Graveyard16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's right. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Graveyard16 and use our promo code Graveyard16. That's G R A V E Y A R D 1 6 to get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. But this says that visitors learn about the history of the castle and its former owners in the front tower. In other parts of the castle, the equipment includes a selection of original items as well as replicas and models. And the room with the most opulent equipment is the knight's room. The castle life in the late Gothic period is presented to visitors in the dining room. Now, the Renaissance Hall on the third floor is where hunting trophies of the last castle owner the Windischgratz prints are exhibited. Now, from May to September, it is also possible to vi- uh, visit the picturesque cave under Pajama Castle. Owing to its position and favorable temperatures, it is inhabited by uh, interesting dwellers, this says, a colony of bats, which is why it's not possible to get inside the cave during the bats' winter hibernation period. That, that's a lot of bats. That yeah, and there's a if, ton of if bats. You can't there. get in there because of the bats. Yeah, <laughs> it's also probably a protected thing. They don't want you Messing walking with the through bats. there. Yeah, <laughs> while they're trying to hibernate, and you got yeah. tourists going in there poking them. It, it, a very, a very interesting place. Cool looking castle, unique because it's built in the cave. Um, but the castle does have some dark aspects to it. Um, it has holes in the ceiling of the entrance tower for pouring uh, boiling oil down onto intruders. You know I that got was those a common... at my house. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> what's the big deal? Yeah. Now inside the castle, there is a small courtroom, which uh, would uh, which overlook the small torture chamber. Now in the courtroom. There is a door that leads to a 63 meter or 207 foot vertical cave drop. So wow. either you were tortured or you were executed on the spot. If you were brought in to the courtroom, you you were not being you were not being tried uh, to see if you were guilty or innocent. Right, you were guilty. Right. It was just a matter of, all right, you're going to die right now or you're going to die later, but it's going to be painful. Um, so, so like so there was no, there was no middle ground here, but at the bottom of that shaft, the bones of the people that were dropped are still there. Oh, wow. They were never recovered. They never went down there and tried to clean them out. I mean, it was it's just a shaft. I mean, 200 feet, push, drop, done. And they just and, they just left them down there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know how you would go back and get them later. Yeah, I don't either. But it's, um, it still seems crazy that they're just sitting there. Yeah, I'm sitting there watching, uh, you know, one of these video tours, and, and they're talking to one of the guides, and he says, they said, so there could still be bodies down there. And he goes, there are. It's like <laughs> they, they never they never got them out. They're they're still down there. Like, I mean, just the way he says it's just matter of fact. And you're like, yeah. oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. When somebody's that blunt about it, it's kind of like Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, Castle Guides report that not not only footsteps are heard outside of the door that leads to the shaft, but they can actually hear distinct conversations that occur between two people. So hmm. two 
two distinct voices uh, as if they were in a conversation. And we're going to get more into the voices because that is the most common uh, experience people have at, at Pajama Castle. Now, the castle also has a very dark dungeon where prisoners would actually be bricked up into spaces in the walls. And human bones have been discovered in those hollows. Footsteps are also commonly heard around the little bricked up areas. Now, according to some psychics that have visited uh, Pradyama Castle, the ghost of Erasmus still haunts the castle, quote, looking for revenge, unquote. Mm. Okay. Now, in 2008, Ghost Hunters International went and did an investigation uh, at Pajama Castle and found some activity inside the castle and in the caves behind it. Again, footsteps and voices were predominantly what was heard, um, and the caves underneath the castles are full of quartz and iron and limestone and salt and water. We're going to touch on that more Mm -hmm. Um, because those minerals just store energy like like a battery. But some people disagree that Erasmus spirit has anything to do with the castle at all. Most will say that the voices or the footsteps are, are the spirits of those people who died during the 1511 earthquake. I think it could be both, you know. Uh, yeah. Why, why Why exclude one? Yep, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> why does it have to be only one? That's right. Now, Sar uh Sarjija uh Carice. Ha. First try. <laughs> uh, she is the manager of Pradyama Castle. She is a self-proclaimed skeptic. And she dismisses the sound of footsteps following you as dripping water. Could sound like something, you know, following behind you. Uh, The mysterious voices are, she says, typically they're from actual living people that you just don't see. Their voices carry, you know, through the stone in the castle. But when Discovery Channel came and stayed a night in the castle, she actually asked them, not to share what they found. Hmm. And she explained that by saying, uh, it's fine finding ghosts when you can go home to safety, but not if you have to work there every day. That's true. So so being, you know, even, even as a skeptic, she still understands, look, you come in here and you stir something up, I still have to come here to work every day. Yep. I have to live with whatever you do. That's right. A French TV channel recorded real voices and sent them for her to translate. But while she said they were indisputable human voices, she couldn't understand anything they were saying. So, uh, you know, Adam and I were talking just before we started recording not only do they have a plethora of EVPs that have been collected from Pajama Castle, they have recordings of actual voices that you can hear audibly. So yeah. it's it's not a situation where, you know, you, you have to have a recorder with you to pick up any of this. The conversation outside of the 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 drop, everything, that that's just that can just be heard with your ears. Which is incredible. That it's exactly it's exactly right. It is incredible because that's not something that we commonly hear. Um, but as this place may have just a ton of energy uh, with with those caves, that may be what's holding on to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get into that here in just a just a few minutes. And something I thought of when you said that, um, she said she couldn't make out what they were saying. Mm-hmm. That could be. Because it's maybe a dead language. It's an older language that used to be spoken in that castle that Mm -hmm. she doesn't know. 
Because, I mean, all languages have changed over time. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, look at look at English. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you can you, you can read old English and be like, I, I, I don't understand what the heck they're talking about. Mm hmm. Exactly. You know, still English. But so, yeah, that's a that's a very good possibility is why she wouldn't be able to understand it. Um, now, during the actual investigation, Ghost Hunters International recorded multiple EVPs. With uh, with with a few of them actually appearing to be direct answers to questions. Hmm. Now each group of investigators reported hearing footsteps in various locations, and a strange knocking sound was heard in the large cave underneath the castle. While reviewing the video footage of the torture chamber, an image can briefly be seen coming into view from the right side of the camera. So you actually see something move into move into the camera and then move back out. That's neat. Yeah. So and, and, and apparitions are not something that you typically hear about when you're looking at uh, at paranormal activity at Pradyama Castle. Um, as I said, most of the activity has been around the torture chamber. That's what we would expect anyway. I mean, that's probably yep. where most of the death occurred. Exactly. But. As I mentioned earlier, there's been a lot of voice activity recorded in the caves. Now, I mean, it is a it is a dark, damp, spooky place, and the temperature is so low you can actually see your breath when you're in there. And, you know, certain caves will keep a constant temperature year round. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, it can be you know in in the six in the seventies in the sixties. You know, but it's actually cool enough here that your your breath will, you know, condense right in front of you. Yep. That's that is cold. Yeah. Because we we went to a cave there in Tennessee um last year sometime and like it was during the summer, so it was hot outside. We were hot walking to the cave. Yeah. And it, it was a guided I'm not gonna go by myself in some random cave. That ain't happening. Um but we walked in and you needed a jacket. So you went from sweating outside to needing a jacket inside. Yeah. And they actually recommend there's there's a couple of more advanced tours that you can take in the castle where you actually hike through the caves. Um, mm -hmm. and, and they do recommend, you know, you, you need long sleeves, warm clothes because it is very cold in there. Yeah. Now. Visitors to the castle also have reported they they feel like an air of sorrow or depression whenever they get around that torture chamber. So, you know, it that kind of stuff leaves a mark. I mean, mm -hmm. it's one thing to have a lot of death in an area, but you know, when you're talking about tortured souls, you know, they can stick around and and leave that feeling you know we've talked about that many times uh, where yep. something really horrific happened and you can feel that just this well sorrow has got to be the best word to describe it yeah it's that paranormal sludge yeah yeah that i've mentioned a few times it's just like slinging bad mojo all over the walls and you walk in you feel it yeah. Same thing when two people have been having an argument and you walk into the room <laughs> and yeah. you you feel that like you they're not saying anything. They're just sitting there. But you walk in and you're like, something just went down in here. Uh -huh. and you can just tell it's that that weird energy that's put off into a room. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the disembodied voices are the most common occurrence at Pajama Castle pretty much happening on the regular mm -hmm. and that's about it i mean that that's really about it as far as personal experiences the guides in the castle report it other visitors the you know paranormal investigators the disembodied voices is what they all come out with and yeah. it's so so common that they just like i said they have tons of EVPs and, and audio recordings. But I wanted to, to take this a step further as to 
why at Pajama Castle would would that be the thing that stands out? Disembodied voices are not uncommon when we're discussing a haunted place, okay? But rarely do we hear that the disembodied voices is the main source of paranormal activity. Right, right. It, it's usually an afterthought. Exactly. But seeing as how quartz is so prevalent in these caves, it really makes me wonder if we could apply a quartz tape theory, like, yeah. like the stone tape theory. Um, so could the voices of those that had come and gone over the centuries have actually been, quote unquote, recorded in the caves? Um, so, so looking at this, quartz, limestone, um, salt, iron, and running water is exactly what you need to form a, a giant battery. Yep, okay. A paranormal energy source. Yeah. And quartz is so unique. You know, quartz is the most common mineral on earth. Okay. It forms last when all the other minerals are for have formed in a rock quartz fills in the gaps okay so right. that's why you'll see these these nice six-sided uh crystals uh, or if it if it's formed under pressure you know deep enough you'll get those really really interesting uh hexagonal uh rounded uh stones but it's it, it conducts electricity. You can mm -hmm. actually connect, you know, and run a current through a quartz crystal, and you can measure the voltage. Most computers and watches and all that have quartz in them because yes. of that. Yeah, exactly. And you can take two pieces of quartz and you put can, them in your nose. And, no, wait, that's <laughs> that's something else. Never mind. <laughs> Put them in your nose. I don't know. Heck? You said two pieces. I went to nostrils. I don't know why. <laughs> but you can take two and you can rub them together. And you will actually see a, like an orange glow between them. Mm -hmm. So they can produce this light. And the light, honestly, is a mystery. Um, science can't explain well why quartz does this. It is theorized that it is the 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 breaking apart and reconnection of electrons, um, yeah. you know. So this is happening on the subatomic level, and the result of that reaction is is, is light. You know, something it's this, like a plasma type yeah, thing. Yeah. So you've got caves that are absolutely loaded with this stuff, and not only that, the castle itself sits on top of a cave. Um, that's that's full of these minerals why why running not? water through it yeah i mean why yep. not why why would these these minerals not be able to absorb that energy especially negative energy from things like i don't know uh mass death due to an earthquake right well and you talking about quartz potentially holding this energy mm -hmm. well several things to kind of go along with that is is one like we just talked about it's used in electronics so it's used to store energy yeah. so we know it can store and conduct electricity mm -hmm. but there are legends and stories of shamans from across the world not just here in the U.S., but all across the world, that they would use a quartz crystal or another crystal when they were performing an exorcism, and they would trap the spirit within this crystal, yeah. and then they would either just store the crystal with the trapped spirit in it, or they would destroy the crystal, throw it into a body of water or something, to get rid of this spirit. So if we're going down the path that this is legitimate 
and that these crystals, you can banish an evil spirit with the right processes into this crystal and it traps this evil spirit. Why would it not then trap the energy produced by negative events? And you've got, it's a limestone cave full of quartz with running water in it. And we've discussed so many times before that when you get limestone with running water through it, it creates a recording device for energy. Mm -hmm. Well, then you add the quartz crystal on top of it to magnify or store more of that energy or something. And you've now created a massive storage device. It's like having a multi terabyte hard drive on your yeah. computer and you just start dumping audio files into it. Yeah. And then occasionally it taps back into it and it plays these audio files. And I think that could explain why not only do we have so many disembodied voices, but that the disembodied voices are so loud. Mm -hmm. They're so predominant that you have the necessary equipment basically to record this energy and replay it at a high volume. Yeah. So that, and I, I love that theory that, that that's what goes on in those caves. Mm -hmm. Um, the idea that you're hearing a, a natural recording of something that happened centuries ago. I mean, what a, what an amazing idea. Yeah. And, and it would explain. I wonder what my rose quartz here has recorded. <laughs> I don't know. Mine, you mine's, hear got anything? A, mine's got a few old MP3s on it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it from Napster. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's your Napster, like Napster quartz. quartz. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I, it, and I say, I say it explains. You know, that's tongue in cheek there. I mean, we realize right. this doesn't quite explain it. But Explains in quotes. Yeah. If that was true, that would only cover um, most of the, the voice activity there, not all of it. Because, as I mentioned earlier, those EVPs that the Ghost Hunter uh, International guys got, Mm -hmm. They it, they literally come back like it's a response to a question. Um, the timing of it, you know, the the phrasing of it, um, it, it does seem like it, it's a response to something that they said. Yeah. Um, and and one of the, I think we've talked about this before. Why in the world do all the EVPs have to be in English, regardless of where they are? Um, it, it seems funny and it seems unlikely, but in this case, they're not all in English. Yeah. Um, you know, some of them are, some of them are not, some of them are in a language that's not recognizable, much like the recordings, uh, that they sent, uh, to, um, uh, to Sara. I got to say it again. <laughs> uh, Sergija Kariz, who is the manager of the castle. Um, and she said she couldn't understand it, but she could she could identify that it was voices. Yeah. Um, and even, Which, even their idea goes along with what Adam's uh, idea was that it was maybe a much older dialect yeah. uh, or a dead language that would be unfamiliar to anyone today. Right. Which actually, to me, that lends some credibility to the legitimacy of these recordings. Yep. Because if, I mean, I'll be honest, if you're in Slovenia or you're in Russia and the majority of your EVPs are in English, I'm going to question that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in a, a English speaking country or predominantly English speaking country. Okay. I'll, I'll, you know, I, I'm not going to argue it too much, but when English is not the predominant language in that country, yet all of your, or, or the predominant language of your recordings is English. Yeah. Then I wonder if maybe you're hearing things or if maybe you're manufacturing, is it, is it like audio pareidolia? 
where you're hearing it in English because it's just some noise and that's what you're making it into or I don't know. And I think that's what happens with a lot of EVPs. Yeah. Um, you, you, you want to hear it. And of course you want to hear it in the language that you speak. So you can make it sound that way, yeah. especially on a lot of these shows. Um, you'll, you'll hear something and you're like, that sounds like a voice. And then they'll put up like a, like a subtitle at the bottom to what they think it's saying. And then when you read that, you hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is totally, that is so true because if you've, if you've never come across one of these videos, um, seek them out because they will have a recording playing a chant, like almost like a crowd chanting. And they'll have a, a, a series of about eight or nine phrases. Yep. And if you're looking at that phrase, that's what you hear. And then you can look at the next phrase and then you realize that's what you hear. Mm hmm. And that it's just, it's the way your brain works. It's trying to make it make sense. Yeah. And so if you have the suggestion of this is what they're saying, then you can hear it. The interesting thing about one of these was that, and we'll, you know, grain of salt here, but they were letting the guide hear the EVP by itself. And he was just shocked when he heard it. And they said, so you, you heard that and he says, yeah, it sounds like he's saying, look, and that's what they all thought during the investigation. Yeah. You know, so unless they told him that off camera, um, just to play it up, he could hear it. You, you could really hear it when you listened, uh, to the EVP over the audio, even without them trying to tell you, yeah. um, so I thought that was very interesting, not only that it was English, but that they could hear it and you could hear it without the subtitle. Yeah. And that that's um, rare mm -hmm. that you can understand things without the subtitle, because most of the time you hear these like I won't name a show, but these popular ghost hunting shows, you hear some recording and it's like punch a wallaby. And you're like, did, did it just say punch a wallaby? And then it pops up with a caption that says, I want you dead. And mm -hmm. you're like, <laughs> I didn't hear that until you put that up. I heard yeah. punch a wallaby. I was but, looking for a wallaby. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> Were wallabies bad around here at one point? And they just like, we just punch them to get them out of the way. I mean, I don't. So that that's kind of our take on on how how this occurs at Pajama Castle, um, a, a really cool place. You know, if you're watching the video, you can see it behind me. I'm gonna move. Um, if you haven't seen it or you're not familiar with it, it it does show up in a lot of movies um, as just kind of a backdrop. It is, it's the, it's the largest cave built, uh, in it's the largest castle built within a cave, according to the Guinness book of world records. I honestly yep. didn't know there were that many castles built in caves. Um, I, yeah, that was my thought. How many of them are there for this to be the largest one? Yeah. That's like saying that I'm the most famous co-host of a podcast, uh, called graveyard tale graveyard tales named Matt. Yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. It's like, well, I can't yeah. dispute that. That's right. You know? <laughs> how many? How many others are there? Yeah. Um. It depends on uh, your thoughts on the multiverse. I mean, to be <laughs> honest, there might be a lot. Yeah, I wouldn't trust any of those other ones. <laughs> Don't trust another Matt in another universe. <laughs> They're shady. Uh, but uh, tell us what you think. All right, everybody, let's take a second and talk about one of our sponsors tonight, and that's Every Plate. Now, we just discussed HelloFresh, and if you listen to the show, you know we talk about HelloFresh and Every Plate. And the good thing is, Every Plate is now owned by HelloFresh. So they're the same company, and 
they're uh, they're a, another meal delivery service. But the cool thing is, if you can't afford the HelloFresh meals, or you think mm, even with the discount, those might be a little on the pricey side for me, then you need to go to Every Plate. Every Plate is the best value meal kit. They they've been rated America's best value meal kit. So can't argue with that. So if, if you're thinking, I just can't do HelloFresh, hop over and, and get you some every plate because you are going to enjoy it. And, you know, they say whether you want to save time and money, learn to cook or eat well, every plate makes sticking to your New Year's resolutions easy. Yeah. And, and just like with HelloFresh, every plate lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and all that stress around meal planning. So you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. So let every plate do all the planning, shopping, and then deliver everything you need to cook a delicious meal at a great price. You get to choose between 17 recipes that change each week, and you can swap proteins, veggies, and sides to your liking. So if if you notice that, okay, next week there's something on here and, and none of us really care for that, it's okay. You can swap it out with something else. Yep. Um, and, I don't like asparagus. Well, swap out at the asparagus and get you something else. Hey, that's right. I, I don't eat celery. Oh, yeah, me I, either. I, I can't yeah. do it. So if if there was something that was real celery heavy, I'm going to say, let's get something different. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> I, I heard a thing, man, it said celery when you want to chew your water with hair in it. And I said, <laughs> that's it. I, I can't do I can't do celery. <laughs> Mine is it all? I always feel like I'm sucking on a penny yes. for some reason. Yes, so, thank you. I, it yeah. tastes like a so, tin can. Yeah, yeah. Now enough so celery if, hate. Sorry. Yeah. So, but if there's something that you don't like, every plate makes it easy for you to swap those things out, and it's it, it's it's so affordable, and you can save so much money um, by skipping that grocery store visit. And allowing every plate to send you the ingredients that you need to make hearty, delicious, and family-pleasing meal. So Graveyard Tales listeners can try every plate for just $1.79 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering our promo code GRAVEYARD179. That's right. You can get started with every plate for just $1.79 per meal. All you got to do is go to everyplate.com and enter our promo code GRAVEYARD179. That's G-R-A-V-E-Y-A-R-D and the number's 179. Um... Are, are you familiar with uh, stories from Pajama Castle? Have you heard of it before? Have you seen pictures of it? Um, let us know. And one of the best places to do that is in our Facebook group. And just this week, you know, we've had a lot of people commenting in the group uh, how great everybody is. And yep. we've gotten a lot of responses about particular stories that we shared for our holiday, our holiday listener story episodes. Um, you know, people have come up just, you know, thanking everybody for the response. Um, well, we had, you know, one in particular said that this was the first group that he truly felt comfortable in sharing these kind of stories because he, over the, over the months, he's not seen anybody just get, you know, attacked or made fun of, or, you know, and, and that happens in other groups. It, it doesn't really happen here. Um, it, it makes my heart feel warm to I know. hear stuff like that because we're all fans of this stuff we mm -hmm. we enjoy talking about it we enjoy hearing people's experiences um so keep them coming no one's gonna make fun of you here you we can't learn anything by getting an attitude and belittling people getting upset or you know taking offense to any, you can't learn anything right that way and that's what's great about the group is it rarely happens, if it happens at all, that somebody will be offended by something somebody says or or it totally 
you know, dog them on their opinion or whatever. And that makes the graveyard one of the best places yep. to share ideas and learn. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, and if you if you haven't joined the group yet and you're a fan of the show, you're really missing out. Um because we've got we we've got members of the graveyard that are that are paranormal investigators. Um mm-hmm. we've got mediums that are members of the group. We've got uh we've got several folks that are witches that are members of the group. Mm -hmm. Um, and they all have amazing perspective on the topics that we discuss. So it's, it is an unbelievably amazing resource for this kind of information to hear all these different perspectives. Yep. And, uh, when you're done doing that, you can hop over to our website, which is graveyardpodcast.com. And there you can listen to the show. Uh, learn a little bit more about Adam and myself. You can find links to purchase Graveyard Tales merchandise, and you can become a patron. And we thank everyone who uh, has helped support the show over the years. It has allowed Adam and I to continue um, putting out better content, more advanced content, um, and we we appreciate it so much. Oh, yeah. All right. So until next time. We'll save you a seat in the graveyard. See you soon.